yeah, if you look at like the Instagram channel, Nature is Metal, it hurts my heart to watch, to remind me a comfortable descendant of ape, how vicious nature is. Just unapologetically, uh, just, I mean, there's a, there's a process to it where the bad guy always wins. <laughs> the, the violence is the solution to most problems or, or the flip side of that, running away from violence is the solution depending on your skill set. And it's funny to think of us humans with our extra little piece of brain that we're somehow trying to figure out, like you said, in a philosophical way, how to supersede that, how to like move past the viciousness, the cruelty, the just the cold exchange of nature but perhaps it's not so, maybe that is nature, maybe that's the way of life, maybe we're trying too hard to, uh, we're, we're being too egotistical in thinking we're somehow separate from nature, we're somehow distant from that very thing. I couldn't agree with you more, in fact, I think actually Orson Scott Card, you know, who's the writer of a, a great book called Ender's Game, um, was, this was a, a statement that, that the main character, you know, Ender, uh, made in the book, his brother was brilliant, um, his brother was like kind of sociopathic, brilliant kid that was ended up kicked out of the school that they were all into for battle commander. Dealing with his brother taught him that ultimately strength, courage, the ability to do violence uh, for all the good and the bad of that is one of the fundamental, most important things to be able to do in life. Because if you can't cause destruction, if you can't cause pain, you will be forever subject to those who can. And I think that you mentioned egotism. I think that, that that's a disease that could obviously strike any of us, but it's something that we're looking at now. We're, you know, I think we should be unbelievably thankful as people that live in the world that, that we do, um, that we can walk down the street without having to worry that I'm like, well, don't worry that that six foot six, 270 pound person over there is just going to leave me alone. And I have a Rolex on, but whatever, I'll be fine because that person is deciding to leave me alone because we've all agreed to live in this relatively you know, sane and or, you know, constrained society because it benefits all of us. And we're doing it because of a philosophical underpinning, not because nature dictates it be that way, because nature dictates it go in a very, very different direction. And the only person, the only thing stopping that person from doing something to me is either me, that person, or someone else that will stand in between us. And if I can't do it, and there's no one there to stand in between us, then the only thing stopping that person is that person. And I have to hope that they're uh, either disinterested or disinclined to do that sort of thing. And I, I think that, uh, you know, it's keeping in mind that, that that is the fundamental nature of the world, whether we like it or not, um, is important. And I think the the quest to, to fundamentally alter human nature is going to be ultimately fruitless. And then also it's, it is a little bit egotistical. A lion does what a lion does. You know, we, we can try to box it in and we can try to, you know, guide this direction, that direction. But, you know, the nature is as it is and as it always will be unless we want to start to constrain it significantly. But now I'm starting to get into individual rights. Who put me in charge? Who says that I should be the one to make the choice is constraining because many of the most awful things that have happened throughout history, one group or one person has decided to constrain others. And we don't like Genghis Khan doing that. Well, I'll do that on a little level. Are there going to be benefic benefits and beneficiaries? Absolutely. But there'll be losers in that too. So I guess it's a, it's a dangerous game. It's almost like putting on the one ring. You know, we remember when Frodo offered the one ring to Gandalf and Gandalf said, no, no, I would take it away. I, I would put it on. I would use it out of the desire to do good. But through me, it would wield a power so terrible you can't imagine. I think that's, that's the big question for anyone that decides that's able to have reach and able to have power. I mean, it was obviously I can't speak to that, but imagine you did have national level, global level power. How would you use it? Would you try to change the world? Would you be glad that you did down the line? I don't know.